Okay. Well, I, thank you guys for, for coming. And uh, I know you guys are all busy, so I'll, I won't take too long. Um, but I just wanted to go over some of the, the things that we're starting to cover uh, in the union about value and shading and, um, and how that affects form. And um, by doing that, I just wanted to show you a few images and also um, uh, do a just very quick demonstration and then you guys can be on your way. Um, but, and, and also uh, I unloaded a few more uh, pages on the latest module. The, you'll notice that they're all right now sketchbook uh, uh, drawings. So they're pretty uh, contained small projects. And that's because that's also why I wanted to meet with you guys today because the next drawing will be larger and a little bit more involved. So this is sort of a warm up to that one. And it will involve like a full value range drawing uh, on like an 18 by 24 large scale. So um, I wanted you guys to kind of warm up with some smaller uh, sketchbook drawings first. So let me quickly um, show you guys some images here. Let's see. Okay. So this probably is going to look um, familiar to you. And it's something many, of you, you know, uh, most of you have uh, submitted this already, um, but the value scale idea. And it's really a foundational um, idea for, for drawing, which is just the range of of being able to really fully observe the ranges from dark to light in the drawing. And, um, and to also remember that like in a, in a really magnificent, masterfully done drawing, you're like the artist is able to observe and define an, an enormous range of sophisticated values far more than you see even on this, this image. And that's part of what you should be training yourself for at this point, is to really look deeply at everything you're seeing, whether it's a face or, or a figure or uh, a simple still life object. So, you know, value this, um, this uh, contemporary Korean artist, um, this is an ink wash uh, value painting and ink wash is something we'll actually be doing probably in a month or so, but it really is a beautiful example of a landscape um, value, sort of early morning kind of dawn study. So, and we'll also be talking more probably in a week or so about more kind of expressive uses of value, but for the, the next week, we'll really be focusing on um, how light falls on objects and people and creates value. So this is actually a very, I think a very lovely figure drawing um, in, in graphite um, and it's in full value. Like you're able to see from this, the, the beauty of it is in how it largely like a single light source is falling on this figure and revealing all of the amazing range of values just on this simple figure sitting in a room. Also, keep in mind that all of you, as you go forward with doing tonal value drawings, all of you, from my experience, are gonna have a very slightly different way of um, using value and shading. So some people, they, their sensibility is very even and, and, and um, Kind of regular and then others is more gestural and expressive so it's like both are very good so it's like if if your value tones are a little bit more like in this drawing gestural that's also you know an excellent the main thing is that you're recording the range of values that you're seeing so on this is like value and and is being used in a little bit of a different uh, purpose. And value here, 
or and if anyone has an idea like what the difference was say between the value in this drawing as opposed to that um any of you guys have sort of an idea of like the different feel of these two kind of drawings whereas like this i'd say is fairly relaxed the figure seems to be relaxed any of you guys have an uh, like uh, offer an idea of what what kind of sensation or feel this figure is presenting i think tense like he feels really tense yes yes and like what um what is giving you that that clue the fact that it looks like he's holding on to like it looks like hay on his back like pulling it on the back of his head like he's he's having a hard time where he's um going through something yes that I definitely and and um and all of that is also by the 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 position and and the artist is giving you all of those clues um by the the highlights basically he's emphasizing i'm sorry or, uh, the artist is emphasizing though that tension by really highlighting the spine and the shoulder blades and and that sort of little push with those highlights is really exaggerating exactly what you were describing um that the way that that and and actually i'm not sure too exactly what the what the figure is holding but that that pose is really emphasizing the you know is emphasized by the the artist really um pushing the anatomy with the, the highlighting the spine and the shoulder blades so in this drawing what what could you guys think about uh for one um what sort of pose this feels like uh like what is the feel of it? Also, what direction? What would you guess about the the light, um, the sort of direction of the light, um, or just any general thing feeling about the drawing from any of you guys? I feel like she looks kind of like sad. Um, cause she's like slunching over, like she's very, uh, thoughtful and the lighting looks like it's coming more like from the window or just a curtain lighting. Yes. Interesting. And, and I, I agree. It does. It feels, yeah, more, it doesn't feel like tense, like the, the drawing before. I, I definitely agree. And, and the light, like you're saying, like it feels like a window um because it's so isolated um so it's interesting like those two are actually not that dissimilar poses but the way the lights use really um it accentuates just the basic feel of, of the figure so that's definitely i could definitely agree um and that's partially what with with the light what i wanted to mention is you know what we're going to be um, focusing on in the next several weeks is just that how the light works and how it's hitting an object um, and for for as we go forward what i'd like you guys to do is because the next several drawings will be um, light focused and you know none of us have you know we're kind of away from the studio at school um, where we have a little bit slightly more sophisticated lighting but start to think about what you have around the house to use for um, setting up a still life that where you can use uh, where you can set up some kind of spotlight with just things you have kind of around the house um, and that can be just a desk lamp but generally um, in the coming uh, next drawing you'll probably want to uh, photograph the still life or work from it, but it should be at nighttime generally so you can control the lighting. And just with a desk lamp or even a, holding a spotlight, um, you can really um, affect the light. Um, now, as we draw, sorry about that, as we draw, um, we're going to be looking at the kind of 
regular way that light falls over objects. And this is actually, it's not, lighting is very much more sophisticated than this simple diagram. Um, but they're generally, you can break things down into six categories of light as they fall over an object. And what's the, the good thing about that is it's very predictable how light is gonna work in a certain way. And it doesn't matter what the object is or what the scale is. There's kind of a regularity that you can look for um, as you're drawing to find these, um, uh, these sort of patterns that, that you see. And, you know, and the thing is, don't get, don't get held up on the terms. These are just, you know, the terms actually can kind of confuse the idea, but it's mainly using your eyes and senses to see what you're looking at. But one of the main things, and I, this is on the chapter, is to that li line of termination is one of the most important things. And on this drawing, it, um, it kind of is that dotted line. And that's kind of the thing to look for. It's not always immediately obvious, but really um, look for that because that's kind of the biggest clue as to where you'll find the generally um, the shadow that's revealing the form to you. And, and what I want to talk about just quickly when I, I do this quick demonstration is because um, we'll be working from life, um, you know, working from still lives is, um, you know, this really is about training yourself to look and see more than you're used to seeing in everyday objects or, or people. So simple household objects like the iron or the coffee pot really can um, reveal an enormous amount of information and be very exciting drawings, um, depending on how sensitive you are to seeing um, the, the enormous kind of complexity of the shapes and the beauty of the values. Um, so what you're going to be looking for is the range and, and interpreting. So a lot of this is going to be, you guys are interpreting what you're seeing and translating it for your viewers and for me uh, into your drawings, into understanding what uh, shades you're seeing. And uh, what I quickly wanted to do was um, do a little um, demonstration quickly of, and I think from what I'm seeing, you guys are doing great with uh, um, the drawings, but I want to do a quickly a large uh, demonstration of how to get started with the toning on a larger scale um, because it's a little different when you switch to the 18 by 24 paper. So let me quickly um, share the other screen and I'll just do this quickly um, so I won't hold you guys up too long. Let's see. Good. Okay. Hopefully, um, you guys see that. Hopefully, there should be some. Yes. Okay. Great. So, a couple things. When once you guys have done the, um, the like the pencil for this, like will be pencil. So you you will have done a simple, you know, a five part value scale. And what I'd suggest is even at some point, either, you know, hold your sketchbook up or maybe even cut it out of your sketchbook so that you have it and you can compare it to what you're looking at. But if you look, like generally what I always do is overestimate how dark a shadow is. So this actually is helpful just in the homemade value scale that you made. Like when I hold this up next to that bowl, um, those shadows are actually fairly light. In fact, most of them are probably up in the middle to the high range of tone. And there's only a few spots where it's it's here and then just in the in a few very small areas that get really dark. So that's something I'd like, you know, on on the, the drawing, and, and I actually haven't opened that drawing yet. Um, I'll wait for a little while uh, for you guys to finish the um, the sketchbook drawings, but with um, blocking in a drawing like this, that specifically for shading is, and, and again, I, I highly recommend like this is just 
um, when the 18 by 24 paper, I just had like a piece of hard cardboard back here and a couple of just cheap office clamps. And, um, and then you could just lean it against a wall. I happen to have an easel here, but having it facing you makes it much, much easier for you to access the whole drawing. But if you, for example, block in um, the bowl I'm looking at here, and remember sort of as, as you guys have been doing, um, start with those sort of you know, quick organizing lines and, and especially for a drawing where you're going to be focusing on shading, you're going to want to keep the preliminary lines nice and light. And also, just quickly, and I'm using just, I have like a teriyaki skewer here, um, which are, you know, very cheap at the grocery store. But I find these work a little more easily for me than the pencil because the pencil's a lot thicker and it's also shorter. So I make sure to kind of. Uh, <laughs> Uh, clip the end down so I didn't dab myself. And um, so, you know, what I'm doing is like, like normally I'm holding up the, the height to the bowl and comparing that to the width. And, you know, it's slightly wider than it is tall. So I kind of going to compare what I've drawn here. And the width is, is this, comparing it to the height. So I know I probably made it slightly too um, slightly too tall. So I'm going to kind of shave that off. The next thing I'm going to do, so I know it's going to exist in that area. And the next thing I do is I'm going to quickly block in the object behind it. And so when you're finding angles on objects like these, um, the important thing is also, I mean, I'm trying to find a way where I can show you is when you're holding this up to the object, um, keep it sort of parallel with your um, eyes. So it's sort of parallel also to the paint and then angle it like I'm angling it between the bottom of the bowl and the bottom of that uh, white cylinder there. And now I'm gonna kind of come over here and I know that, that it'll fall in about this angle. So I'm gonna draw a little organizing line here. And, and I'm only gonna draw the bowl, but just so you guys kind of get the idea, I'm gonna um, sketch in just roughly where that would fall for the purposes of this drawing. Also a useful thing to note is, you'll notice on the, um, where the bottom of the cylinder starts is about midway up the bowl. So, I could see that's about here is where that would, that would end up being. So I know that this is going to exist somewhere in this space here. But focusing on the bowl for the purposes of this demonstration, another quick um, tip with measuring on, on an object like the bowl where it has a big sort of wide mouth, how to figure that exactly is I'm measuring and, and the, the mouth of the bowl and comparing it to the rest of it. So, excuse me, the rest of the form. And it's the mouth of the bowl is about half the width of the rest of it. So, if the mouth of the bowl is about here, in this area, and I to see if that's correct, it should be about half the width of the other section of the bowl. So, it's, it's in about that area. And what I do is um, I'm going to draw that sort of central plumb line. And I'm going to make a little midway mark on the sides to help me guide the ellipse. So what I'm using this is sort of as a, as a target. And, and I'm using my hand in this case in sort of that like tripod grip. And, and I'm going to, you know, slowly kind of feel my way around this object and slowly get the pencil lines a little darker as I go. That's a little wobbly, but it, it takes, you know, several passes and you can adjust as you go. And then once you kind of have that started, 
block in the bottom with pretty much the identical, um, uh, oh, sorry, actually one first step is, you'll notice that the bottom of the bowl is a little narrower than the top. And you can kind of, if I hold this up vertically, you can see on the left side of the bowl how it flares out. So it probably appears to be about here. And you can sort of follow the angle down. And, and again, if you use the sort of allow your arm to make these kind of motions, it, it kind of, if you allow yourself to work from the shoulder, your arm kind of wants to make these kind of marks actually. If you don't work from the wrist, wrist, um, but work from the, the shoulder rather. So now we have kind of the basic uh, form and, and it has, there's a small lip around the top. So once I have the form in, I don't want to make any more lines than I need. So what I'm going to do is start right into observing where the shading starts. And let me just clean that up a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is, um, and, and another sort of quick thing is if you have kind of a cheap, um, any, I mean, this doesn't have to be this big, but any sort of cheap household brush around, um, it'll keep the, the, like, this, you know, my oily hand is going to smudge the paper. Um, but what I'm going to do now is switch to an HB pencil, and I'm going to look at, kind of compare the tones on here. And, you know, the, the average tone of these is somewhere in between here. So, and I'm also noticing the light is sort of the hottest right on the left side here. So what I know I can do almost immediately is tone out in a light tone this entire side. And when you're doing a, a large scale you know, 18 by 24 drawing like this, there are areas where you're going to get into fine detail, but when you're starting out the drawing, and I'm going to go a little harder so that it shows up uh, hopefully on camera, but the idea is it's kind of the process is from very general to specific. So you'll start the drawing with large gestural strokes like this, blocking in the form and you're going to include the cast shadow here. And, and again, this, this part, you're going to go lighter than you need to, just so that you have the form established. And I'm going to also tone in because it's got some cast light uh, on the inside. And I've made a lot of, you know, I need more lines than I need really. So I'm going to go back and erase those as, as you know, soon. But I also want to tone these in. So the idea is you're toning in big areas lighter than you really need them to be um, so that you can modulate them. So, and also just quickly, uh, I had mentioned it's important that you, you understand with shading especially, you also need to include the tones that are around it. So, for example, on the left edge, there's that very hot um, highlight, but the only way really to define that is by toning the area sort of around it where it falls into shadow. So I'm going to tone in a little bit up to the edge of that bowl here. So you can kind of see, like you need that tone that you see past the bowl in order to start to define that highlight. And I'm, I'm all of this was, is with an HB pencil so far. So I'd say stick with, like HB is a great pencil, sort of mid-range pencil, um, before you even sort of switch to like a 2D pencil to get the darker shades. So I'm also noticing it starts to get darker up in here. And so I'm going to kind of slowly tone my way through that area. And this is sort of where you'll get used to the most comfortable way to use the, the shading, like your own sort of technique for shading. And it's going to take you a little while to get comfortable. But once you find it, you'll be, you'll be great. But it generally takes a little while 
working on a larger form like these are before you kind of feel like you, you know the most comfortable way to do it for yourself. And also once um, uh, you'll notice like I'm doing the, the overhanded uh, grip with the shading. So it's like I'm actually holding it here and it's under my hand. So I just I have a little more access to um, there's a little bit more lead. When you're doing finer towards the end of the drawing, when you're doing finer uh, detail, you may want to switch to an overhanded grip. So the, th the thing is there isn't, uh, there's, you're generally or probably going to switch back and forth in any drawing between the two, depending on what gives you the best results. So be sort of pragmatic about it. It's, you know, whatever's going to, whatever is most comfortable, it gives you the best results is really the best way to hold your pencil. So I'm going to switch now to um, a 4B pencil. And one more thing quickly is you'll notice in your art kit, and you should have like a little sanding, uh, a little handled block that has sandpaper on it that, that has, you can tear off. And what that's for is also, to, it's an alternate way of, sh of sharpening the pencil. And in my case, you don't have to do this, but you, it, it is an option is you kind of take an X-Acto knife and whittle down the pencil so that it's, um, you have a lot of the lead exposed and then you sharpen it on um, the sanding block. So that's another way to do it. And you know, you don't have to, but the one thing that is nice about that is you get a lot more of the lead exposed um, than you would with just a regular pencil sharpener. Um, but quickly what I'm doing is now I'm gonna go up to the rim of the bowl and it seems to be that's about where it really starts to get dark. And I'm going to work that tone into the underlaying tones that I've already laid down. And I'm noticing there's, you'll see here that cast shadow down here where it hits the, where the bottom of this bowl hits the ground, it does get nice and dark as well. And then that casts, it starts a little darker where it first starts. And then it, you, what you would do is kind of taper that out into the rest of the tone you've already laid out. Now, um, what I'm going to do also is, is I'm noticing there's a nice, you know, a lot of light comes in an object from light bouncing and hitting the surface and bouncing back up. So there's a little reflected light here, a really nice sort of detail where light has hit the white cloth and bounced back um, and, and illuminated the bottom of the lip of this, um, this bowl. So you're going to you know, use the eraser as, as much as you need. But what I would say is don't smear or, or avoid smearing or using a blending stump, stump at this point on these type of drawings. Work, the idea is to work with the texture of the paper. It's really important to do that first before you jump into um, you know, using a blending stump is get sensitive because every piece of paper is going to have a slightly different texture to it. So your job at this point is to really learn kind of the sensitivity of your materials and work with, with it rather than against it. And smudging tends to really lose control of what you're doing very quickly. So what I, what I do like to see is in, in the next sort of several drawings is let the paper breathe. Like it's, it's you're going to see the texture of the paper and that's a good thing in, in a drawing for these types of drawings we'll be doing next. So generally from this point, you would be um, now slowing down, focusing, and uh, also like the H pencils, the two H pencils, generally once you get to a point where you're ready to refine the drawing, that is a good time to, to get the, either to get it darker, break out the 2B pencil and the 4B, the 6B and in the other direction where the light gets very subtle 
the H pencils are actually good for those areas because they're lighter. They're, you have to be a little more careful with the H pencils because they're a little sharper. Um, so they, 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 but they do work in a very controlled way. So you, with the H pencil, like a two H like this, you can get some very nice small details and it gives you a lot of control over how you tone an object. But um, so, and, and you'll notice kind of in looking here, very, like there isn't a lot of this drawing that's much darker than these tones here. So, and, and some of it, like in the area between the, um, the bowl and the cylinder, it gets a little darker where it's cast, where the shadow casts um, off the other object here. And that's also helping to define the, um, define the bowl. And then, you know, that's when you go in when you're ready to refine the object, that's when you go in and start cleaning up all these sort of manic lines that I use to, to block in the, the initial um, drawing. So the erasers then, especially if you have the a pencil eraser, will really be useful to you. Um, so let me, or uh, let me transfer over here. So um, basically I wanted to quickly show you guys that and did you guys have any questions so far about any of that? Please, you know, speak up and let me know. Um, Are we going to use this technique for uh, this week's assignment? Um, this, so yeah, this week's assignments are, um, you will be using it in a smaller scale. So yes, I would say, um, uh, I, I haven't opened the, the large still life drawing you're going to do next, um, but on in the sketchbooks assignments, particularly with the charcoal um, and the pencil as well, like there's uh, actually this is especially useful in the, the two at the end of the chapter. So yes, you'll be using them. There's a value drawing you're going to be doing of an interior of your room in your sketchbook where you're going to be shading very much exactly like I just did there, very energetically. And in fact, in, in those drawings, they're going to be shorter gestural tonal drawings. Um, you're not going to really refine them as much. You're going to be building tone very much like I did just there and probably in a similar amount of time and maybe a little bit longer. So yes, you will be using that technique for especially the, the two uh, observational drawings you're going to do of, uh, of um, the idea is you're going to find a window in your in your home and draw the window and all the objects that, that happen to fall around it and do observations of how the light is affecting basically the, the how light is falling on the walls around it on any objects around it um, so that type of overhanded shading is going to be very useful for that and it's also going to be useful for um, if you haven't done the egg um, observational study yet in your sketchbook, that type of shading, just in a very smaller scale, works beautifully for the, the tonal shading that you would do on the egg. Um, and also, you translate it into, you'll be using the charcoal pencil um, on, there's also a study of two simple objects um, that you'll be doing on newsprint. And with those, you're going to use a black uh, charcoal pencil and a white charcoal pencil. And with the black charcoal pencil, you'll be doing similar kind of overhanded shading with, with that as well. So this will all be useful for uh, all of those sketchbook assignments for this week um, in a just smaller scale. So any, any other? Did you do that painting in the background of the shading? Did you do that painting in your background? Oh like yeah, that's, that's a it's a painting. Um, so that's that's oil paint, um, and it's sort of a uh, it's an old painting I did about. Um, it's kind of like a it's it's like a, a mixed paint. Like the paint is sort of this it, um, 
mixed neutral, these mixed bright colors that I mix to this sort of neutral sepia color. So it kind of looks like an old uh, book illustration. I was trying to get that kind of tone. So it was kind of a, um, uh, it's like, it's based on sort of disasters at sea. So it's like this, these two, two ships and this giant but it is very much, it, it is sort of a value range that's, that's similar. It's definitely, that is a tonal painting. So it's, it's um, a very kind of limited range from, from, you know, the darks on the, the dark on the um, figure, and then it gets, you know, progressively lighter um, in the sky and, and um, the ships are sort of silhouetted against the, highlights in the, in the sky. But that is, yeah, definitely, um, that is a tonal sort of value painting for sure. But, it, but just done with brush rather than, um, you know, with pencil or, or uh, ink. But, and, uh, and like I was saying, we will be using ink wash um, in a few weeks. So you will be using brush and um, watered down ink uh, on paper to, it, it's sort of a, the, it, it's sort of a step in between drawing and painting, but it's still drawing. Um, so that also uh, falls into val in value range as well. Any, any other questions you guys have? Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so basically what I'd say is if you guys could um, you know, finish up those sketchbook um, assignments. And what I'll do is in the next uh, day or so, I'll open the, the next drawing and then there'll also be a discussion where I'd like you guys to um, uh, discuss or offer your opinions on some uh, art and then also uh, show us some art that um, is inspirational to you. Um, so the next two that we'll be opening will be the, the large, larger still life in pencil and uh, a discussion basically. But for now I'd say, you know, focus on finishing up those um, uh, sketchbook drawings um, and, you know, and, and then I'll open the, the next couple in the, in the next day or so. Okay, so. And, and, and yeah, so please also, uh, I have, like I said, um, you know, appointments you can make on, on Confer Zoom where I'm happy to uh, uh, talk as well. And, um, and sometimes I can do a demo there quickly um, if you have a question about a technique or something. So, okay guys, so what I'd say is, yeah, definitely look over, um, there's some videos in the module and read through, there's a very brief chapter that, that covers some of the things we talked about. And, um, and then hit the, the, those smaller sketchbook drawings and um, submit those and, and I will uh, go through those as quickly as I can and get feedback to you right away. So, th you know, uh, if you guys don't have any other questions, I, th I think, you know, you, thank you guys again for um, dropping in I appreciate it, and um, uh, I'll, I'll send this video or the, the demonstration to anyone who couldn't make it. Um, so thank you guys again, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. And again, let me know any questions you have. Um, I'm you know, always checking my, my messages. So thanks again, guys, and um, have a great day, okay? Thank you, bye-bye. Bye.